Sutra. The seventh consists of habits of uh, animosity and interconnected enmity, which give rise to grievances. From this, there come into being flying ropes, thrown stones, caskets, and closets, cages on wheels, jars, and containers, and bags and roads. It is like someone harming others secretly. He harbors, cherishes, and nurtures evil. Commentary: The seventh consists of habits of animosity. And interconnected enmity, which give rise to grievances. Animosity refers to resentment, and can also mean the making of false accusations. False accusations cause suspicions to arise. In Chinese, the word "grievan" (grievances) (xian) has a character which literally means to hold in the beak, as a bird holds food. Here, someone harbors grievances and will will ill will in his mouth and refuses to let it go. From this, there are coming to be flying ropes and the hell of thrown stones in which one is struck with pieces of rubble, or one is closed up in a casket, or in a closet, or put in a cage on wheels. On the person, or the person is put into a jar, and a fire is laid under it, so that the ghost gets cooked. Bags and roads. The ghost is put in a big bag and then beaten down. Inside, he bothers, suffocates, and suffers the pain of beating. This kind of karma is like someone harming others secretly. He harbors, cherishes, and nurtures evil. Is always brewing evil thoughts in his mind. So try because these two habits swallow one another up. They are coming to being tossing and pitching, seizing and apprehending, striking and shooting, casting away and pinching, and other such experiences. Commentary because these two habits swallow one another up. They are coming to being tossing and pitching. The habit of animosity from the past combines with the habit of animosity in the present in such a way that they devour one another. That is, if the karmic power of one's habits from the past is stronger, one will undergo retribution for the past deeds. If the power of the karma in the present life is the stronger, one will undergo retribution for it in this very life. That's what's meant by swallowing each other up. The ghost is tossed about or thrown for a distance, so that when he lands, he will undergo pain and suffering, seizing and apprehending. After he is tossed away. He is seized and brought back, striking and shooting, casting away and pinching, and other such experiences are all undergone as a retribution. Sutra. Therefore, the first commands of the ten directions look upon animosity and name it a disobedient or and harmful ghost. Bodhisattvas regard animosity as a wood of drinking poisonous wine. Commentary. Therefore, the first commands of the ten directions look upon animosity and name it a disobedient and harmful ghost. They regard conduct governed by animosity, resentment, and revenge as a disobedient and harmful ghost. Such conduct goes against the wishes of the person who is the object of the resentment and ends up by killing the person. Bodhisattvas regard animosity as the old drinking poisonous wine. The Chinese language uses an adjective, adjective which is the name of a bird, chen, a deadly species of falcon. If a feather from this particular variety of falcon is soaked in wine, the wine will be poisoned so thoroughly that a sip of it would be lethal. For there is no antidote for it. Sutra. 
the eighth consists of habits of views and the admixture of understandings such as sad kaya drishti views mor moral prohibitions grasping and deepened insight into various kinds of karma which bring about opposition and produce mutual antagonism from them they are coming to being court officials deputies certifiers and registrars they are like people traveling on the road who meet each other coming and going commentary the eight consists of habits of views and the admixture of understandings such as sat kaya drishti these are habits which we all have if we make proper use of views they are an aid to your mind and nature but if you use them incorrectly if you have biases then you can create bad karma sat kaya drishti is a sanskrit word which means view of having a body there are five kinds of views the view of having a body one sided views the view of prohibitive morality views that grasp at views and devin views these have been explained in detail before with the first view people become attached to the view that their bodies are themselves and attached to the things around them as being their own one sided views are not in accord with the middle way they fall into either the view of annihilationism or the view of externalism with the former one believes that death is like the extinguishment of a lamp there is nothing that follows it one doesn't believe in a soul or in rebirth either one believes that if one is a person in this life one will be a person in every life they think it is impossible for a person to undergo rebirth as an animal the third is an attachment to extremes of morality like that found in some sects in india such as those that would follow the behavior of cows or dogs the fourth to have the view that grasps views means being fraught with attachments people with this view have a very decided opinions and an overbearing view of self there are also different views that can drishti views moral prohibitions grasping and delving inside into various kinds of karma refers to these five views one may have a bit of intelligence but the principles one grasps at are deviant because they are not proper views one creates karma which bring about opposition and produce mutual antagonism with this kind of karma one is always opposing other people and disagreeing with them from them they are coming to being called officials deputies certifiers and registrars they ask for certification and proof in writing they insist upon records and the like these rules are like a people traveling on a road who meet each other coming and going sutra so because these two habits influence one another they are coming to being official inquiries dated questions examinations interrogations public investigations exposure the youths who record good and evil carrying the record books of the offenders arguments and ration, uh, rationalizations and other such experiences commentary because these two habits influence one another they are coming to being official inquiries the two habits again refer to the habits involving the five views that one builds up in former lives coupled with the habits involving the five views which one continues to grasp hold of in this life official inquiries means one is thoroughly questioned dated questions are raised when an examiner uses expedience to get you to admit your wrong doings this kind of thing happens in courts and also happens in the house examinations means that after you've stated your case 
the official said about to examine its accuracy step by step. They send people out to verify everything you've said. Interrogations bring everything out in the open, just as if it were to appear in a mirror. Public investigations and exposure do the same. The youths who record good and evil carrying the record books of the offenders' arguments and rationalizations. These youths are young employees of the house who keep records on good and evil done in the world. When your turn comes, they read out your record. If you try to argue or rationalize, they just find the page and place it and read it out just as it actually happened. They have unquestionable proof and your protestations are useless. These and other such experiences are the lot of those with deep-seated views. Sutra, therefore, the first commons of the ten directions look upon evil views and name them the pit of views. Buddhist advice regard having forms and one-sided views as they would, standing on the edge of a steep ravine, ravine full of poison. Commentary, therefore, the first commons of the ten directions look upon evil views and name them the pit of views. To them, they, the habits of evil views are like a deep abyss. It's fine if you don't fall in it, but if you do, it's not at all easy to climb back out. What is that must regard having forms and one-sided views as they would standing on the edge of a steep ravine full of poison. They are extremely dangerous and it is very easy to sleep and fall into them, so what is that must stay far away from them. Sutra, the ninth consists of the habits of injustice and their interconnected support of one another. They result in instigating false charges and rebelling. From them are produced crashing between mountains, crashing between rocks, stone rollers, stone grinders, plowing, and pulverizing. It is like a slanderous villain who engages in persecuting good people unjustly. Commentary The ninth consists of the habits of injustice and their interconnected support of one another. They result in instigating false charges and rebelling. Injustice means to accuse someone without cause to frame him. The person in question is in fact innocent but the government brings a case against him or else some private individual sues him. It is biased and unfair. Included here are both the habits of being unjustly accused and of having done injustice to others. If you have been unjustly accused to others in the past, then those comic obstacles will bind together with what goes on in this life. If you've never been unjustly accused, then perhaps the karma of it is being newly created in this lifetime. If you know that the person you are accusing did not actually commit the crime and you are fully aware that you are bearing false witness, then you are being unjust. From them are produced crashing between mountains, crashing between rocks. This is the hell of squeezing mountains in which mountains on all four sides close in and crush the offender. The same kind of experience is undergone in the help of crushing rocks. You are squeezed into a meat patty. Stone rollers is another hell as there are stone grinders blowing and pulverizing. If a person is a constant liar and bears a false witness, if his speech is totally unreliable, then in this hell his tongue is cut out, or it is grappled with an iron hook and pulled out, and then oxen drag blows back and forth across it. With pulverizing, the offender is put into a grinder and ground to bits. It is like a slanderous villain who engages in persecuting good people unjustly. 
Slanderous refers to any kind of unreliable speech or accusation. Sutra, because these two have its joint ranks, they are coming to being pressing and pushing, bludgeoning and compassion, squeezing and straining, weighing and measuring, and other such experiences. Commentary, the comic obstacles from former lives combined with the comma from one's conduct in the last life to cause one to be pressed or pushed down or to be beaten with bludgeons or to be forcefully controlled. Sometimes the ghost is put into a bag and then the blood is squeezed out of it just the way applesauce is made or once the injustices are weighed and measured with precise accuracy. These are the kinds of experience one has to undergo. Sutra, therefore, the first commons of the ten directions look upon harmful accusations and name them a treacherous tiger. Buddhist advice regard the injustice as they would avoid a lightning. Commentary, therefore, the first commons of the ten directions look upon harmful accusations and name them a treacherous tiger, even more vicious than an ordinary tiger. Buddhist advice regard injustice as they would avoid a lightning. Buddhist advisor who cultivate the way don't want to make any mistakes in cause and effect, and so they see that the habit of acting in unjust ways is as dangerous as encountering a point from the blue. It's just as a frightening a situation, and in the same way can strike people down dead on the spot.